Hi, I'm James and today we're looking at uh, Twilight 2000 module by Daniel Roos um, called Twilight Loot uh, and basically it's things that you might find. So it's $2.99 on that's in dollars on drive through RPG. Uh, now I have reviewed Daniel's stuff before. I did the enhanced mood elements, um, which I was most amused when he said, wow, thank you for reviewing. Um, I'm getting reviewed by a celebrity. It's like, okay, fair enough. I, I am getting quite worried that people are starting to recognize me and at parties and this weekend, I even had someone come up and say how much they like my army lists for seven days to the river Rhine. So, I, I will start signing autographs at this rate. Um, now, Daniel sent me this free of charge um, to review, so uh, he's got no expectations on what I say. Uh, those who know the channel will know that if I don't like something, I will say so, even if it's um, something that's been provided. So, let's have a look what we've got. Okay, so we've got nice, you know, nice illustration. Um, he, I've also noticed he does upgrade it as well, so the, he does upgrade, uh, if it's a mistake, he finds it, there's a new version comes in. Now, one of the nice things I like with this is the legend for what the items are. So we've got snow, water, forest, building. All useful things where you can go, ooh, it's not appropriate for my setting. So that's quick and useful. Uh, oversized vehicle, aircraft, small, valuable and fresh. So there's a lot of nice little icons and we'll see those as we go. And he explains that there. Um, so yeah it's nice and straightforward so far so we've got trinkets so these are always quite useful uh, you can obviously do this as a combined thing and roll on the whole thing or you might decide you know what I'm gonna have somebody have something um, so you know so some random little ones I quite like 132 I've just caught my eye uh, role-playing game box with books and dice always nice to get the dice um, and you've got the options of D&D, Twilight 2000, Call of Cthulhu, Tunnels and Trolls, Rollmaster, Paranoia, Vampire the Masquerade, Cyberpunk 2013, Buck Rogers, Space 1889, uh, Wasteland and Mutant. Okay, that's not a, um, an unreasonable selection. It's nice to see the little Twilight 2000 reference. Uh, on, occasionally you'll see something like this. Chessboard with some pieces replaced by bullets. I like that one. That, that's a lovely little bit. Um, Mixtapes, yeah, yeah. For those who are younger gamers, we used to put all our music on tape, uh, and a mixtape was you, you basically picked the stuff that you liked, um, and you've actually even got a sub table for what music's on there. Um, yeah, some interesting random ones in there. Some a bit of a sense of humour. Uh, Queen, who wants to live forever. Nancy Sinatra, these boots are made for walking. The Doors, The End, yeah, Top Gun theme, Kenny Loggins' Danger Zone. Uh, I'm kind of guessing, Daniel, your taste in music at this point. Your movie taste, though, is absolutely bang on, um, particularly since I can, I've, seen some, I've seen nearly all of those. Um, a lot of those would be something that I would actually try and have handy, in all fairness. So we've got that. Uh, we've got, <laughs> you know, action figures. Uh, some of the stuff could be quite useful, like a toy weapon. So even the sort of the stuff you think probably not going to be a lot of use, there might be something there. Yeah, full-size human replica skeleton. Good luck with uh, finding a use for that one. Um, so that's an interesting one. Six shot by six shooter, a revolver with all the bullets spent and six corpses in a circle. Each corpse with a bullet hole in their head. That's an adventure seed in there. So clothing, all the different uh, random bits and pieces. It's not particularly weighted towards things, so you're as likely to find an astronaut's helmet as you are a military Kevlar helmet. Um, it, to me, it's more a list of ideas than anything else. So we've got various uh, more clothing. Then we come into miscellaneous supplies, hygiene items. So things in there, like sun cream, sanitizer, um, Nails tools, probably a bit less useful. Makeup kit, yeah, so some's going to be really useful. Some isn't. A random colour chart to go with some of the bits and pieces. So we've got things like glow sticks, artistry items. Food, this is probably going to be quite a useful one. So you've got candy and snacks. Um, 
I mean, I did look through it. It does seem to be tailored possibly towards American um, items. Um, so, you know, so stone field rations. Um, I like this one because it so talks about scavenged Soviet supplemental food packages. So D tin tins of sausage stuffing, D tin tins of jam, D6 tins of honey, D10 bags of hard candy, and D10 chocolate bars. You're lucky if you got those in the, the Russian rations, uh, which is mainly things like bread that you have to soak before it's actually edible. Um, yeah, so it, it's possibly a bit biased towards American um, sort of bits and pieces. Now I like this, we've actually got a breakdown of Soviet field rations, breakdown of NATO MREs. Um, now it is worth saying that these are very different to the British rations that I'm used to. Uh, British rations work on a whole day's food, whereas MRE is individual menus. Um, with it being four, I'm kind of guessing, and I'm just going to have a quick look. Um, I think these are actually sort of a more modern one. Um, during the first Gulf War, there was a big um, problem where they only had four ration packs, which is what we've got here. Uh, but what then went wrong was the fact that They'd be, a lot of them would be donated to the Saudis, who didn't have that sort of setup, and they found two of them contained pork, so they were then given back to the initial American troops to arrive, which meant that for the first month or so, units of the 82nd, 101st, were surviving on two different meals. It wasn't a popular thing. Uh, but the meals there don't look like they match them. They seem to be more, more recent ones. Uh, we've got Swedish lerp rations as well. So we've got some nice variety, and I, I do like that. You know, it's nicely illustrated, nice little cartoon illustrations. Um, so we've got beverages, fresh food. Uh, we've got an alcohol table. Okay. Uh, cooking, machines, tools, electronics, materials, detection equipment, miscellaneous. We've got a quick um, vehicle chart. Uh, and vehicle equipment that goes with it. Now some of these are probably not going to be as as much use because one of the problems you're going to get is you haven't got statistics for these. So you possibly will need to create some of these. Uh, they've tried, he's tried here very much to be generic so you just get APC or an IFV uh, or an MBT. So there is some nice bits there. Uh, we've got a condition chart as well. So that, that's good. Uh, weapons Okay, um, again, this possibly is where I would say you need weighted charts. Um, you know, silver bullets are going to be pretty rare, I would say. Um, you've got plenty of different ammunition. Now, it's only got 762, it doesn't differentiate between that, um, the different types of 762 762 by, by 39, 762 by 51, or 762 by 54. So there is a, a slight issue there. Um, doesn't have in the 8mm Mauser, and a, I've just spotted a minor mistake there 5.54, that should be 5.45. So you just need, you know, uh, but again, it's something that is perfectly reasonable. You've got rules, sorry, you haven't got rules, you've got um, rare ammunition, which is fine but you would need the rules for them. Um, I do like the fact that caseless experimental is in there. That's my old friend 4.7 um, caseless which was used on the G11. Uh, okay so we've got weapon attachments, military firearms, yep. Uh, first aid kit, uh, this is this is always interesting for me. Um, drugs, okay I'm sorry, a quick glance down that. Um, okay they tend to be um, Drugs, as in things like cigarettes, um, cannabis, sheesh, magic mushrooms, some medication. Yeah, okay, we've got some um, quite reasonable ones in there. Um, antihistamines, antidepressants, antidiarrhea, laxatives, antacids. Yeah, blood pressure medication. Okay, med insulin. There's some nice ones in there, uh, but they probably need rules again. But just for that bit of setting, they, they are really good. So containers to actually carry things, that, that's a sensible thing to include. Um, fair bit on that. So I like that. You've got things like a, a light assault pack and what kit's actually in it. What's on someone's webbing. Okay, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. Uh, I mean, looking at it, it looks, again, very American style. Um, but still potentially quite useful. 
Um, so we've got always a trauma kit. What we've got? Quick clot Z fold, four yards by three inch hemostatics. Okay, yeah. Uh, hemostatics might be a bit early for that if you uh, get that. But then again, I'm kind of guessing with the wall kicking off, it might have been pushed forward. Compression bandage, wound packing, compressed gauze. Yep. Yeah. Combat action tourniquet, the cat tourniquet. Yeah. Uh, cravat. Uh, combat tape roll, uh, NPA uh, airway, so nasopharyngeal airways, um, decompression needle, okay, um, hyaline chest seal, one twin pack, burn dressing, marker pen. Oh, that's interesting, we've got NPs but not OP airways. Uh, sorry, this is where I get geeky. Um, okay, so quite sensible with all of that. Um, yeah, that looks quite sensible. We've got a quick overview of what he's done in his other books. Um, and what I like with that is actually for the Twilight weapons, we've actually got a list of which weapons are in there. Same with the Ukrainian arms, something that perhaps, unfortunately, we're, f we're way too much familiar with. Uh, Post-apocalypse loot is uh, that. Um, okay, so that, that's an interesting bit. And then we've got sort of some of the other stuff he's created, loot decks. Uh, this is all available on um, Drive Through RPG. Uh, various other things. I've got some more of those to review. Uh, and we've got an index. I always like an index. Index is always good. So I tell you what. What we're going to do is we're going to. Well, imagine the players have found a body, and what we'll do is we'll actually roll to see what they find on it, and we'll just see how well this system works and how we can then adapt it. So we're actually rolling bizarrely a D800. So it's an eight-sided dice followed by um, the percentage dice. So we'll have. I tell you what. We'll have D6 items. We'll have five items. So what do we find? So we've got 401. So every item is numbered. 401, we've got a pack of M&Ms. Okay. We've then got okay, 604. So, so far we've got a pack of M&Ms. We've got D10 litres of... of um, Check which one it was. Of yeah, petrol. So we've got five liters of petrol. Okay. What have we then got? Seven hundred and seventy-seven. We've got an anti-material rifle. Okay. I'm trying to think of why we would have these items together. Uh, we've then got four hundred and forty-nine. So 449 is a Swedish lerp menu. Uh, what have we got? Uh, we've got chicken and seafood paella, Mexican tuna with pasta, chicken meatballs with spicy tomato sauce, tuna with chili paste, kebab stew with corn and pepper, Thai chicken with cocoa, uh, pasta bolognese, curry sausage and potatoes, yellow pea soup with pork, uh, roll twice, As we roll twice for that. They're not numbered, so that, that's what's thrown me with that one. So we've got uh, a one and a three, so we've got the chicken and seafood paella and chicken meatballs with spicy tomato sauce. I don't know Swedish lerp rations, um, that might be accurate, I don't know, maybe there's a Swede who's actually used them out there and has got an idea. And then we've got the last item, 555. So what's 555? battery charger for multiple battery types. Mm. So I've got all of that. Um, I'm going to assume we're in Sweden. Um, that would kind of make sense. So we've got Sweden, Swedish, we've got an anti-material rifle, a couple of lerp rations, some M&Ms and a battery charger. This is sounding like a Swedish um, special forces guy that we found the body of. So it would then let me elaborate. So you can see how this how this works. Um, how useful it is for you? I don't know. Um, I think it's good to start a thought process going. It's not something I would probably use slavishly. Um, but in fact, I'm probably now looking at a small lerp cache. They've dropped it for some reason. Uh, probably the anti-material rifle is going to be bulky. I'd have to go a bit further in, find out what the Swedish uh, anti-material rifle is. I'm not, I'm not an expert on the Swedish military. Uh, let's say I wanted to change that. Um, let's say we're looking at it from a British perspective. So we'll change it to a British perspective. Uh, what we'll have, we'll replace both the rations, because that's two meals with one ration pack box. Um, the M&Ms, 
I'm going to take out because that's going to add it into the rations. Uh, and instead of that, you've got a Yorkie bar, uh, which from this era would probably have on would probably have um, the civilian copy, which which would tend to annoy some of the players because it said "not for girls" on it. Um, later versions had "not for civvies." Um, so we've got that the anti-material rifle. Okay, we're probably talking at this point a Barrett. Uh, and the battery charger I'll leave intact as well. Possibly the battery charger might be for, if we've got an anti-material rifle, there's a decent chance it's got a scope or something on it. I might look through for the accessories, add an accessory in, uh, and give them the batteries and the charger for that. So you can see how, how this works. Um, for $2.99, it's not exactly breaking the bank. Um, how much use it is, I think depends on you. Um, I think it's a good starting pro point for prompts and it will get me looking at things and going yeah I could use that or oh I could do that with it that with it so yeah um, probably worthwhile um, let me know what you think hopefully you've enjoyed the video if you have please click on the like button below so that I know what people like and I know what to make more of uh, alternatively if you've enjoyed it and think you'd like to see more please click on the subscribe button that way you get notified by YouTube whenever I bring out a new video and you never know there might be something in there that you hadn't considered because I do cover a variety of things on the channel and finally if you have a little bit of cash going uh, I now have a patreon account um, I'm always looking for patrons because at the end of the day let's be perfectly honest it's a good way for me to get a little bit of money that will use to buy review items or to travel to museums and so on. Uh, I don't put a huge amount on that. At the minute all we've got is one tier charging a pound uh, a month which just as I say helps cover my costs. See you soon.